What's up? We got a big video today, early, like a month early before these pairs drop in the States. So we're going all out. We're doing the unbox, we're doing the on feet, we're doing the lace swaps, we're doing the detailed review you've all come to know and love. If you join us regularly on this channel where we talk sneakers and fashion, of course. Now, let's get into the sneakers at hand. Today we are talking about a very dope Jordan 1 cut in a very specific way that you just don't see every day with Jordan 1s. And that's what makes these a little bit more extra special in my opinion. Now these already dropped overseas. So I paid up on StockX to get these to me early, guys. I don't have some plug. I don't know people at Nike. I wish I did. Holla at your boy. Bang the line. I'm ready to collaborate. But StockX also came through big time. with A little issue I had. The customer service was mwah, impeccable. Very much appreciate everybody down at StockX for helping out your boy, getting this pair to me as fast as possible so I can bring it to you today. We are talking about about the Jordan 1 High 85 in the Georgetown colorway. Mm, mm, mm. Before we do it, let's first take a closer look. All right, guys, welcome back. And now that you've seen a closer look of these bad boys right here, of course, welcome back. Love and appreciate each and every last one of you that messes with the channel. Of course, if you haven't joined the fam, also helpful links down in the description below, protective shoe spray clean, kids to keep the kicks clean, as well as links to cop these bad boys via eBay down in the description. Now, this is an early look, so these don't drop for about a month as of the recording of this video. So maybe you wanna wait, but really the resale isn't crazy for these. I'm not sure how big the release is gonna be, how easy they're going to be to get, but these are going to sell out. That's, that is a 100% guarantee. So you are gonna be paying up resale regardless. So just something to keep in mind. Definitely try your hand though, enter as many draws as possible because before we get into anything else, I will tell you right now, these are worth it. Let's start off with the colorway itself. Of course, this is the Georgetown colorway, which kind of seems odd because Michael Jordan did play at UNC and Georgetown of course was a rival. But the reason why we get this colorway in a Jordan one, other than making money, is because Jordan's first taste at success on the basketball court came at the college level against the Georgetown Hoyas. So that's why you get this colorway here. And I mean, the navy and gray color blocking is just great. It almost doesn't matter. You can do navy and gray with a lot of things. You're gonna be happy with the way the color blocking turns out. So again, why not? It's a beautiful colorway and you can see it here. I mean, it just looks really good. Now, possibly the most interesting thing about this release is that it's the Jordan 1 High 85. That 85 designation is significant because it completely changes the way that this shoe is manufactured typically from what we get in modern Jordan 1. So we're talking about going back to the original tooling, the manufacturing processes, and creating a shoe that is as close to what you would have got back in the 80s if you were copying Jordan 1s, which in and of itself is pretty dope. We've seen these with the Air Max 3 releases that of course are the Air Max 90s, but they're called the Air Max 3. That is also the same idea. You're getting a shoe that is as close as possible to what you would have copped back in the day. So this means that the cut is a little bit different. This means that the materials are a little bit different and it's all to the positive in my opinion. As far as fit goes in terms of this versus like a regular, here we go, a Jordan 1 High OG that just dropped the Marina Blues, which if you haven't seen my review on this one. You need to check that out because these are underrated for sure. As far as fit goes, the way these feel versus these, it's going to be more or less the same. They feel pretty similar, although the material difference is significant with these versus these. And visually, these do sit a little bit higher, like maybe a few millimeters higher on the 85 cut versus the modern day high OG. So these just got that little bit of more of a push upwards a little bit more of an L shape or J shape, depending on the way you're looking at it, which reminds me of course of more vintage or retro basketball sneakers. If you think about something like the Adidas top 10, how the tongue on that looks like a tower coming out the bottom of the shoe, that is definitely more of a retro silhouette as opposed to more modern day shoes. So you get a little bit of that with the 85 cut versus the OG cut, but really on foot and feel, it's minimally different. You really don't feel that, especially because you're not gonna be lacing these things super tight around your ankle unless you're actually hooping in the 
them, in which case good for you. The other thing with this one versus other high OGs is the material. So this is a competitive or performance based leather that you are getting versus what you get on this one. In a nutshell, what that means is that this leather is a little bit thicker. It's cut thicker than this leather. And actually like looking at both of these shoes, tough to project something like that on camera. So I'm not gonna put you through that. But when you look at the seams here where the black and the blue meet, and you can see the edge of the leather cut here. And you look at this one here, this you can see is minimally thicker. It's not some crazy difference, but it's definitely thicker. And then you can feel that in terms of the stiffness that the upper has right out of the box, but do not equate that with low quality. I know the Jordan 1 lows have that stiffer, cheaper leather, and then that's reflected in the price point because they're only $100, $110. Same thing with some dunk releases, but that does not mean that this is the same leather as those. This is stiffer because it's a thicker cut of leather. And of course there is a coating on this leather to kind of keep a little bit more rigidity. All that means is that this is going to break in with use and it's going to break in with use beautifully in the way that we've seen. When you see those old beat up Jordan ones that just have that beautiful patina on them, this thicker leather is going to accomplish that better than what you get with these. Not to say that these won't do it as well, but you can really feel the difference when you hold both in hand. This feels a little bit more softer, a little bit more plush. This is a little bit more stiffer, but these are both going to break in beautifully. This one though is going to hold up and break in even better and I think mold to your foot even better the way it was intended and designed. There are some different visual elements that you get with a high 85 release versus the OG Jordan 1 releases, one of which is the presentation, right? Comes in that dope red and black packaging, the semi-translucent, nicer tissue paper, not just the regular white stuff, and then you get the individually wrapped shoes as well. One thing though I kind of wish we would get with this, and it's a gripe I have with a lot of Jordans now because these came with the cardboard shoe tree. Jordan 11s typically always come with a nice plastic reusable shoe tree. This just came stuffed with tissue paper. I understand it's probably period correct, but at the prices we're paying now, I would like a permanent shoe tree to come with my shoes, as well as multiple laces, which these do come with, we'll touch on in a second. On top of what feels like a more special presentation with the unboxing, you do get different tags that you would get on other Jordan releases. This comes with that original hang tag with all of the information. Really dope because it breaks down the construction of the shoe and the performance aspects of it. Of course, you get the same encapsulated air, which is, you know, minuscule air by today's standards, but that gives you that little bit of heel cushion. And you also get a code with the shoe size printed inside the collar here, which is something you don't see in modern Jordan 1s, as well as a sticker on the insole with all kinds of codes on it, model numbers, mold numbers, and the date which says March 29th, 1982. Of course, not the date that this exact pair was made, but we know what they're doing there. And that's the majority of the visual differences that you get with a Jordan High 85 versus a Jordan High OG. And it all comes together to really just make the shoe feel that much more special. Now, one thing in particular about this pair right here that I absolutely love is the tongue, the tongue done in this very light shade of pink. And there's just something about that. They could have easily made this gray to match the toe box, just go all the way up. I guess they could have done it in a navy blue if they wanted to. I mean, like the marinas here, it's just black going all the way up. It looks fine. Nobody would question it. But this just adds a little bit of extra something to this shoe that makes it that much more special. It's not just a gray and navy shoe anymore. There's just this little touch of pink that just brings it to another level. And I love the way it contrasts with the navy laces. Now, when you get them, threaded at the bottom are the gray laces. So the, the navy laces come as the second pair. But I found, and you can tell me what you think down in the comments below, after seeing them with the gray and seeing them with the blue, I am definitely leaning towards this navy blue and I'm gonna leave the navy blue on there again because of that higher contrast with the pink tongue. And I like the way that it blends into the eyelets, gives it a more clean look. I think this is the way to go. Now, in terms of fit and sizing, I would recommend that you probably just go with the same size that you go with for any Jordan ones. For me, it's true to size, same size I go with with Air Force Ones, I do in Jordan Ones. But for this one, because it was the 85 cut and I've never had one of these before, retro sometimes, things that are old tend to be a little bit more narrow and smaller. So I opted for a 12 and a half. I half sized up on these and really it doesn't matter I, actually because this is a casual shoe anyway. It's not egregiously big where it feels like it's slipping off or I'm getting a lot of movement inside. Actually, it's even more comfortable because this platform being a pretty flat wide platform as it is, is just is even more so now. So I actually found this to be 
very comfortable and a little bit easier to get on than say like the, the true to size 12s. The moral of the story is I don't feel like I need to swap these out for a 12. I'm just gonna rock with them at the half size. So if you want an even more wider, more comfortable fit, you can consider a half size up as long as you're not getting the, the wider, more comfortable fit with your true size. So overall guys, from a material standpoint, from an aesthetic standpoint, from a quality standpoint, this is one of the most beautiful Jordan 1s I think that are going to drop this year. I know there's a lot of hype for the Rebellion Air that are dropping. My personal opinion is just too much going on with that sneaker. My hope is that people are so into the Rebellion Air and whatever other Jordan 1 releases is happening in the next month or so that this one gets overlooked. I doubt that's going to happen because the resellers and the bots don't sleep, but I really do hope that people maybe don't pay attention to this as much as some of the other releases that are happening. Of course, the big release month being March for Yeezy as well. It's also Air Max month. So hopefully all of that stuff diverts attention away because this is super dope. And unfortunately, it's not gonna be a sleeper like some of the other shoes I talk about on this channel, but I definitely think you should try to get your hands on a pair ASAP. Because these are just gonna go so well with so many different looks and fits. They're gonna look great with jeans, they're gonna look great with joggers. Just about anything you throw at these, they are going to look dope. Kind of like those Marina Blues, which you can check out that review right here, as well as Jordan the Fam. I appreciate each and every last one of you guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. Peace.